All right, so this is hopefully going to be one of many videos which I create to help explain blockchains, but more specifically Bitcoin, to developers who are new to blockchain technology. I'm going to be going through the entire Bitcoin developer reference from start to finish, step by step, and dissecting anything that I believe isn't perfectly explained or has some ambiguity to it, or just things that I think are super important to fully grasp for anyone who wants to get into this stuff. It's a pretty long document. And there's a lot going, uh, there's, there's going to be a lot to learn here, but I'm going to break it down into bite-sized chunks uh, because breaking into blockchain technology has seemed to me like something that a lot of people are really struggling with. And even professionals that I've personally hired to support me in my own development have often absolutely no idea what's going on. Um, so I've started this channel both to sort of cement my own understanding of what this stuff means, and I'm still learning, uh, but I think I'm at the stage now where I can shed some light on what's going on here. Um, I'll start by saying that I have a computer science degree and I've successfully forked the Bitcoin code and mined my own Genesis block successfully. And now my main personal project is creating a decentralized gaming platform called Gelf, which I hope will be out next year. So let's start from the beginning. Um, I've decided to go through the developer reference first rather than the actual Bitcoin source code because this seems like kind of a good starting point for developers who haven't really touched or looked at the code yet. Um, the code can get pretty hairy in some, part, in some parts and I find that when I've taught programming in tech before it's much better to start somewhere that has more of a high level approach to explaining the concepts. Um, so, what is the developer reference? Well, as you might expect, the developer reference provides all the technical deets for building these apps. Sometimes they're called dApps, the D stands for decentralized, and we'll go into more details about what that actually means later. Um, this document assures that it's not a technical specification, but in all honesty, it gets pretty specific about the tech, so I would regard it as a pretty good technical specification, but I guess that's up for debate. It also advises us to install the current version of Bitcoin Core, which I would also suggest anyone watching this um, does and have a play around with that, try to get it working. I will link in the description to the source code and a guide to compile it. If you guys feel like you'd like a tutorial on getting that working too, I'll happily provide that in another video as well. Then it says, if you have any questions, you should ask the Bitcoin dev community. I would suggest doing that as well, because there's a lot of questions along the way that you're definitely going to have. But also, please make sure you comment all your questions below, because I will make the effort to answer as many as I can. Um, but I found the best um, resource for answering your questions is definitely the Bitcoin Stack Exchange. Um, it's the best place to get tricky questions answered. So I'll link there in the description as well. So just the final thing I'll quickly gloss over before we actually get our teeth into the meat and potatoes of Bitcoin. Um, and that is the reason that they say that this uh, developer reference isn't a specification. Um, and they're really quite adamant about this document not being taken as a specification um, or the be all and end all uh, of the Bitcoin spec. So the reason is, and this is the whole premise underlying Bitcoin's interactions on the Bitcoin network, is the idea of consensus. So what does that even mean? Well, consensus is the idea that everyone agrees on what's going on and someone is not going to just do something weird or different. Everyone is agreeing on a specific set of protocols, which are basically rules for interaction. So in the Bitcoin network, everyone has to agree, yep, these are the protocols we're using, this is what we're going to do when X happens, this is what we're going to do when Y happens, and this document is saying that it doesn't decide on the consensus per se, it's not the job of this document to decide what the consensus is. Um, I guess you can basically see that this is like a disclaimer in case something horrible happens and everyone loses their Bitcoin in a bug. Uh, pretty much security is the main factor in the Bitcoin network, so being clear on consensus is super important. Um, Bitcoin devs are actually working on making the consensus stuff more portable across different environments and I'll also link um, to the Libcoin consensus github which has a bunch of information on that and some juicy code that you might want to look into if you're interested in that side of things um, but I'm sure that we'll eventually get to that point in the developer reference. So in the next video I'm going to start at the very beginning of how the blocks of the so-called blockchain are made up and what the data within the blocks looks like. You'll learn about block headers and the different types that are used, like data types, and also a little bit about SHA-256 encryption, uh, which is one of the encryption methods that Bitcoin uses for security. I'll tell you about Merkle roots, which are used as part of how transactions are structured in a block, and also about something called a nonce. But that's about it for now. Make sure you like and subscribe to my channel. Um, and if you have any questions, please make sure to post them in the comments and I will get back to you as soon as possible. Um, no question is too stupid um, or too complicated. So make sure you definitely do that. And I will see you in the next video.